This is part two of six in our series on the introduction to programming. In this video, we look at variables, constants, inputs, outputs, and assignments. So before we dive into this video, what actually is a variable? Well, if you go right back to what we covered at the start of the course, we looked at one of the registers in the CPU, the memory address register. And this contains the address of an instruction or data to be fetched or written to the memory. And in a very similar way, a variable is nothing more than a pointer to a memory address, which you're then able to give a user-friendly label or name. So in order to go through these concepts, we're actually going to use a simple program written in Python, a beat that dice game. So this is a simple game for young children learning to compare one and two digit numbers. The rules are simple. A player rolls two dice. Doubles do not count and must be rolled again. The player's score is the value of the highest and the lowest dice combined. And the highest dice is always four. So if a five and a seven were rolled, the result would be seven, five, 75. So let's just do a quick example round. Craig rolls a three and a four. The total of his throw is 43 because four is the highest of the two numbers. Note the dice are not added together. So it's not four plus three is seven, it's 43. Dave then rolls a three and a three. The roll doesn't count as it's a double, so he throws again. He rolls two and one. The highest dice goes first, so he gets 21. OK, so here's the uh, outline code written in Python for this game. And let's go through it now and pull out some of those concepts we mentioned at the start of the video. So here in this line, we see an example of a variable and we write total equals zero. And that's us assigning a value to our variable total. A variable is simply a value that can change or vary, hence its name, whilst the program is running. And it's simply an address in memory. Of course, referencing a memory address is very difficult for programmers. So having a user-friendly label like total is much more helpful and it makes our code easier to read and understand. Now, every variable requires a data type, but in Python, unlike most languages, we don't actually have to declare our data type first. Python works it out based on the value you initially give it. So here we've said total equals zero. So it assigned the data type integer to the variable total. Here we see an example of a constant roles per player equals two. And it looks exactly the same as our variable in Python. Now a constant is a value which remains fixed and does not change while the program is running. So we must set it at design time when the program is first written. Now the reason it looks identical here to the previous line of code we looked at is that Python doesn't actually support constants. If we wanted to implement constants in a Python program, we would have to set a value like we have here, roles per player equals two, and then we would have to make sure we never actually changed it. In most programming languages, you could actually declare this as a constant and it would be unable to be changed during program execution. Assignment is simply when we give or supply a value to a variable or constant. So in both the previous lines of code we've looked at, we are supplying a value to a variable or a constant. An assignment is performed with the equal symbol. You assign the value on the right of the equal symbol to the variable or constant on the left. So here we see an example of an operator. Total equals total plus roll value. And operators can be used on variables and constants. So with this plus symbol, we are adding the contents of total to the contents of roll value. And then the result of that calculation is being stored back over the original contents of total. Now the topic of arithmetic operators is covered in more detail in a later video, so we won't look at other examples now. Here we're carrying out two actions at once. 
The first is getting input from the user via the command input. And this is how we typically get input from, say, the keyboard. And we're assigning it to the variable user input. But at the same time, we're also casting or converting the value entered by the user from a string into a number. And that's performed by the command int. That's because even if the user presses the key six on the keyboard, that's the ASCII character six. If we want it stored internally as a number, we have to cast it or convert it into an integer. And we do that with the int command. So there's two things happening at once in that line of code. We can see casting occurring in a number of additional places as well. So we can see in these top two lines that we take the value that's held in the variables dice one and dice two, which are integers, and then we cast or convert those into their string equivalents and then assign those to the variables dice one string and dice two string. You can see lower down, we take the contents of the variable role value and we cast and convert it to an integer before storing it back into role value. We can actually cast from any data type to any other data type. The next thing to cover here is outputting, another quite common thing to do in programs. We gather input, we process that input in some way, but typically we also need to report the output to the user so they know what's going on. An output statement is used to print the screen in Python. Here we've combined the contents of a string, dice one colon or dice two colon, with the contents of a variable, dice one or dice two. You'll notice that strings were enclosed in single or double quotes, and this depends on the language. The exam board doesn't actually specify which specific procedural languages you should learn. That choice is most likely up to your teacher. Now, although the syntax of each language is a little different, the underlying concepts are exactly the same. We use a variety of different languages in our examples and throughout our videos, but don't worry if the code doesn't exactly match what you're being taught. Learn the concepts and apply them to your chosen language. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the difference between variables and constants and how can they be used? We're just going to go over a quick note now about the language guide that's used in your external assessments. So remember, the exam board don't know what language you've been learning to program, so exam questions might use an unfamiliar syntax. Towards the back of the specification for both AS and A level, you'll find Appendix 5D, where the exam board state the following guide shows the format pseudocode will appear in the examined components is provided to allow you to give learners familiarity before the exam. Learners are not expected to memorize the syntax of the pseudocode and when asked may provide answers in any style of pseudocode they choose, providing its meaning could be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer. So Although you don't have to answer in the specific syntax shown in the exam papers, so you are familiar and not thrown in the exam, it's worth downloading a copy of the specification and printing out the appendix. If your school is a Craig and Day subscriber, then ask your teacher for a copy of our student learning and exam support guide. This provides all the information you need in a set of handy reference sheets.